In the name of God, most gracious, most compassionate, all praise be to Allah who has mentioned in the Holy Quran that God raises those who believe of you and those who have been granted science higher levels. All best praise be upon our uh, prophet who has taught us all good, who mentioned and praising to the teacher that God and his angels and all those in the heavens and even the ants and the whales and the sea and the oceans praise those who teach people well. Your Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Muhammad Al Qasimi, member of the Supreme Council and ruler of Sharjah. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. Welcome to the opening of the educational forum on the teacher education organized by the Regional Center of, uh, of RC, RCEP. And the best thing to start with uh, is verses by the Holy Quran recited by Ibrahim Osama, the student in the Sharia University and College and Sharjah University. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان your Highness, dear attendees, educating the teacher is a very important objective in all the countries. It has a growing interest from all communities, the developing and the developed, because it has an effect on the, the uh, family and the individual there is a message and a mission that has that uh, the teacher has which plays a big role in raising the children and developing them for a brighter future we would like to ask and welcome his uh, his excellency hussein ibrahim al hamadi minister of education and chairperson of rcp Governing Board. Peace be upon you all. His Excellency Sheikh Sultan Al Qasimi, I am honored to be with you here on th in this forum about educating the teachers. We gather today with people of knowledge in order to discuss the most important and crucial profession in the world, which is teaching and educating. It's very important that this, no this knowledge that is passed from the teachers to the students to be cultivated because they are the ones that raise the generations. They are entrusted with educating and raising awareness in children. Therefore, this noble profession and the teacher has to be aware of his importance and his crucial role. 
because he is the de developer and the cultivator of children, of students. And he has to provide them with all that is new in the n knowledge and society to prepare them educationally, psychologically, and socially. Therefore, preparing the educator is very important. He has to be qualified academically and professionally in order to act and perform his profession in the right and best way possible. What distinguishes this period of time is the, educa the educational uh, knowledge that is acquired through technology. Your, your Highness, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt these phenomena are very important and they play a big role in educating and preparing the teacher, especially with the accelerated speed of knowledge. Therefore, it will play a role in preparing students that have high capabilities and innovation as well as creativity. Therefore, this forum will carry out certain objectives in order to shed light on success stories and experiences in educating the teachers, which would enable us to benefit from these experiences in order to prepare better, better teacher policies in the GCC countries and create a qualitative difference in preparing educators and teachers in the universities. Your Heinz, in this frame, in order to achieve this objective, we have to answer certain questions within this forum. What kind of programs that would help the teachers and their candidates in order to select the excellent secondary school leavers? What are the qualifications that would create a certain qualitative change within the education of students? How do we prepare a teacher that can analyze and meditate and en enhance the results of his educational process and also to contribute positively in developing the curricula and the outcomes within the students. We also have to think about what are the strategies that could be implemented and could be followed by the ministries of education in the countries in order to prepare the secondary student graduates to incentivize them to study education in order to assume the profession of education later on? What are the paths that should be pursued in order to prepare the distinguished teacher? Ladies and gentlemen, the role of the exceptional student, uh, teacher has great challenges and obstacles that we have to overcome. We have to harness all of the capabilities in order to create the cultured and educated teacher. Therefore, we, we put a comprehensive plan for educating the teachers and also the students as well in order to conduct this and carry them out within the national framework. From the books that will be taught within the secondary schools this year, and also there are certain training programs for teachers in addition to the collaboration with universities, local and international, in order to cultivate the skills and qualifications of teachers. We hope that this forum would reach 
the desired results in order to be an example for all other GCC countries in order to implement the best ways possible to enhance the abilities of teachers. And also, this would uh, be uh, would flow into the uh, licensing of teachers as well, which would be implemented soon. I would like to thank the experts that are present with us today. I would like to express my gratitude to to uh, Dr. Al Qasimi for his sponsorship of this event and for his pioneering role in order to enhance and develop the teachers. I hope all the success for you all in this forum. Peace be upon you all. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Minister, for your speech. The original uh, Center for Educational Planning, which is considered one of the fruits of the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasi, member of the Supreme Council, ruler of Sharjah, as he has established this uh, center for that uh, unique uh, era among uh, the educational institutions and the university city. Uh, on behalf of the director of the center. His gracious, most compassionate, and all peace be upon his prophet, Your Highness Sheikh Dr. Dr. Sultan bin Muhammad Al Qasim, member of the Supreme Council, ruler of Sharjah. Your Excellencies, ministers, ladies, and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. The Regional Center for Educational Planning is honored to host this uh, forum of uh, teacher education at the patronage of His Highness Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasim, member of the Supreme Council, the ruler of Sharjah. And the center is uh, pleased on this occasion to welcome the ladies and gentlemen and all the educators participating in the events of this scientific forum. Uh, the, the center under its authority uh, since his work and all the agreements signed between the United Arab Emirates and UNESCO to conduct conferences and scientific forums uh, all under the context of its strategic goal aiming at spreading knowledge to support education in the GCC uh, to overcome the issues or hurdles it is facing and also to shed the light on the latest updates to benefit them and utilize them. And perhaps the teacher education forum is one of these scientific forums which discusses one of the key areas facing the policy settings of enabling uh, teachers uh, to face the challenges of the second millennium. Uh, no doubt the teachers are the cornerstone in the education process. And uh, therefore, many countries have uh, shed a lot of interest on enabling him and preparing him with all competencies and the skills which uh, will assist him in providing a better services and to manage the education and teaching competently. And also, uh, we have Singapore and Finland among these experiences. Your Highness, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we hope all success for this forum to achieve its goals and the targets according to the following programs, designing programs with clear visions on the GCC and exceptional education and application experiences. A, a program which is uh, based on a pivotal uh, program with the key education uh, to the adolescents and the children based on knowledge and the pedagogy which is uh, taught under uh, practice and uh, far away under just theoretical content. A program including a practical education with uh, no less than 30 weeks in, 
and the studies and also creating communication channels between the uh, ministries and uh, the education departments uh, to build the bridges and to close the gaps and integrate the relationship between them to determine uh, the standards uh, to uh, set the skills required by the teachers and uh, preparing an attractive environment for the growth of teachers and retaining them in this profession. The RCEP uh, is grateful for this uh, sponsorship of Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasim, member of the Supreme Council and ruler of Sharjah. His Highness was always uh, keen on developing education and teaching, and perhaps this forum is an indicator of all his interest in education. I'm also pleased to thank Hussein Ibrahim Al Hamadi, the Minister of Education, and the chairperson for RCEP for sponsoring this forum. Thank you very much, and peace be upon you all. Thank you much, Mr. Khalfan. Your Highness, sponsor or patronage of the uh, forum, the RCEP, and all its workers owe you the thanks and gratitude for establishing this center and your kind sponsorship. And we are honored to invite Your Highness to step to the uh, stage to present an honor on presented by His Excellency, the Minister of Education. So please, the stage is yours. Thank you, Your Highness, and uh, thanks to all the audience. And we'd like all of you to uh, benefit of the first session, which will start shortly. Peace be upon you all. In the name of God, most gracious, most compassionate, and best praise be upon his prophets. I would like to invite now uh, the moderator of the first session to uh, come to the stage. Uh, the first presentation will be and will be presented by Dr. Diane. So you are invited to start the first session. Thank you. Salam alaikum and good morning. My name is Professor Stephen Bossert. I'm Deputy Vice Chancellor and Academic Dean at Emirates College for Advanced Education. And I've been asked to be the moderator today. We have two distinguished uh, presentations um, with given order, and then an opportunity for you as the audience uh, to ask questions. Um, our first paper today is presented by Ms. Diane Lalanchette, who represents uh, UNESCO. She has an extensive history of working in the field of education, starting with work in, on the PISA project in Canada and has recently come to UNESCO to work on teacher education. So without further ado, let me have Ms. Diane come to the podium. Please welcome her. Good morning. Um, I'm Diana Lancet. I work at the UNESCO. Uh, I joined the teacher task force uh, last July, so still fairly new, but we're quite excited about uh, the work with the, the teacher task force. The Teacher Task Force has put together this guide to help countries developing their 
teacher policy um, in their own country. But before I talk about the guide and before I present the guide, um, I would like to say a few words about the reasons as to why us at the UNESCO Teacher Task Force, along with many other countries and many other stakeholders, we do believe that teachers should receive that much, much attention. Why do we believe that teachers should be at the center of education? In 2015, the Global Monitoring Report that was produced by the UNESCO uh, stated three important statement or <laughs> about the about the the teachers and they were saying that we know that good teachers help children young people and adults acquire foundation skills we also know that well prepared and supported teacher help learners adjust to rapidly changing socioeconomic conditions and we also know that teachers that are well prepared and supported teachers can help implement technology intervention into the classrooms. We also know, and I think that is also an important statement, that um, an education system is only as good as its teachers. So when we're considering factors that will influence student learning, research will show that the biggest contribution to performance, student performance, will come from students. What they bring to school, their skills, their attitude, the family and the community they come from. So that's the biggest factor. But if you look at the factors that are coming from the school itself within the school environment, teachers are the most important factor to contribute to teacher to student learning. Um, but how can we and how can a country provide the best teachers? In uh, the Global Monitoring Report, they were saying that there are four strategies for a country to get the best teachers. The first one is to attract the best teachers. The second one is to improve teacher education, and there will be more discussion about it, which is very interesting. And the third one is to get teachers where they're most needed. And the fourth one is to provide the best incentives uh, to retain the best teachers. In May 2015, 2015 the global education economy framed a, um, a common education agenda within the Sustainable Development Goals. They focused on the SDG, Sustainable Development Goal number four, aiming to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning uh, opportunity for all. They agreed on the important role of teachers, and this is why they committed um, to ensure that teachers are empowered, adequately recruited, well-trained, professionally qualified, motivated, and support, supported within well-resourced, efficient, and effectively governed system. So that was a bit of a long introduction. <laughs> so what I'll do next is I will be presenting the, the teacher policy development guide per se. Uh, and again, before I do so, I would I would just like to say that the guide is available in seven languages, including Arabic version. Um, and what I have here is a summary of the guide, which is available on the UNESCO website. But there's, this is the summary. There's a bigger report that in, also includes very interesting case study from different countries that were um, ad, that was looked at when the guide was being developed. 
the structure of the guide and I, my presentation will also be following the structure of the guide itself. So in the first part, there are five chapters and as I said, um, the full document include cases, case studies that are uh, coming from a variety of uh, countries and context. So the first will be the introduction, then how do we frame a policy to take into account the country context. Whoops, sorry. Uh, the chapter three will talk about dimensions of the teacher policy, and I think that's the biggest, that's where the, the most important part of the guide is. Chapter four will be talking about what do you need to put in place uh, the development of a strategy, and chapter five will focus more on the implementation plan. So chapter one uh, provides the purpose and the scope. And it's important to say that the guide itself was developed to assist countries to help them develop their national and teacher policy. And I have to say that the guide is based on the principle that a comprehensive teacher policy will include a wide range of interlocking dimension, and I'll talk, avec, um, I'll talk about those. But we also say that a holistic national teacher policy that is adequately resourced and implement, implemented with the necessary political skill and administrative skill is the best investment in learners' education a country can make. Um, so, oops. so the, the chapter also described the audience of the guide. Of course, it is made for public authorities. It also take in, takes into account private education providers as well as education stakeholders as it could serve as a a tool that uh, different stakeholders could use to discuss about um, teacher uh, policy. It's also important to note that the, 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 the guide is, has been developed to take into account all levels of education from pre-primary education to primary, secondary, uh, and higher education as well. So the chapter two covers key aspects of uh, framing a teacher policy. The key aspects include the need for a coherent and integrated approach, particularly with other education policies and national development plans and priorities. A teacher policy should not be whoops, developed in isolation but it should really be aligned with uh, the country's educational plan. So chapter two, sorry, <laughs> chapter two also provides uh, foundations or principles or elements that a policy should include. So the first section of chapter two, the first part of it discusses the need to align the teacher policy with education and other national priorities, as I said. Uh, we say that the teacher policy should be strategic, holistic, feasible, sustainable, and content, context sensitive. And it should also take into account the different level. Um, and as I mentioned, it should be coherent with the other educational uh, and national priorities. Now there are elements of uh, implementation that are needed to develop uh, teacher policy. And the first one is a vision or a mission that should emphasize the, the teacher effectiveness, their motivation and their professionalism. Sorry for the <laughs> accent. Um, the second one, uh, is saying that we need to have targets, benchmarks, and timelines in order to measure progress. It, also, it should also make sure that it covers comprehensive key dimension 
and I will talk about those key dimensions in a moment. It should also be assessing the environment. It is very important that before developing a teacher policy, we sit down and make a good analysis of what are the difficulties, the challenges, and the gaps uh, in the country. We will also need sound data and, in, and management in order to see how well we're doing uh, in terms of progress in relation to all the different dimensions. Of course, there will be coordination mechanism that will be required because, as you will see, a teacher policy is not being developed in isolation but with a group of different uh, stakeholders that should be involved. Funding needs and sources will also be important. The participation and stakeholder commitment is also key to success in implementing the policy. And as uh, any other policy, evaluation and uh, revision is also important to not only assess the progress, but also to monitor, uh, monitor the progress, but also to identify what changes would be needed uh, if we were to revise the policy. There's also a, a third section in chapter two that talks about existing tools. Uh, and they're listed in the document and there are references provided uh, on the internet if you want to have access. There are many international organizations that are interested in teachers, uh, the teacher task force being one of them. Uh, I take this opportunity to mention that on October 5th, it, on the World Teachers' Day, uh, the UNESCO at the headquarter in Paris will have a celebration and will also have a high-level panel to discuss teachers and teacher motivation. But there will also be UNESCO field offices that will also celebrate the World Teachers' Day. So I welcome you to come and look at the UNESCO website to see uh, the celebration. It will be an important day. Now, chapter three, in terms of uh, in terms of, for this guide, is really an important chapter as it addresses the different dimension that uh, a teacher policy should include and work on. It's important to note that those are not distinctive dimension; they are all interrelated, and they have to be part of a holistic teacher policy. And it's also important to note that there's no one-fits-all teacher policy that could be used to uh, respond to the need of every country. Every country is different. So it is very important while a country is developing the, the teacher policy to take into account the specificities of the country. So there are nine key dimensions that are highlighted in the document. And here are the nine dimension, and I'll refer to the guide. The first one is teacher recruitment and retention. Um, so there has to be, the country has to set a recruitment policy, a strategy, recruitment strategy, in order to, um, the, and the recruitment st strategy should be based on uh, current and projected qualitative and quantitative needs. It should also attract and retain the right number of teacher, teachers. It should also promote teacher profes professionalism. And it should also include procedure, for example, for licensing and certifying teachers. Um, teacher education, and there will be more discussion, as I said earlier, about, uh, about teacher education. The guide make, makes a distinction between three uh, stages of teacher education. The first one being the initial training. It will be important for the policy to state what is required to enter, for example, a bachelor degree to become a primary teacher, for example, what are the minimum entry requirements? Um, 
so there has to be a balance between setting the level high enough so that at the end of the program teachers will have the the, the skills that are and the knowledge that are required but we also need to make sure that there are sufficient candidates that will meet the needs in order to have sufficient number of teachers. The second stage is about the induction program. Not all countries do this, but uh, it's similar to a probationary period. Period. Once the, I'm not sure if here in UAE it, it happens, but after the bachelor degree, the students will go into the classroom and they'll have a six month period or a year period where it's more of a probationary period and they have a mentor working with them, helping them to develop the skills that they need. And the last part of um, teacher education is continuous professional development. It is important that the teacher policy takes into account the need for teachers that are already in the school system to continue receiving uh, training and for many different reasons uh, and one of them is the advantage of it is that teachers can then take ownership of their own professional development which is very important. The next one is deployment and uh, it really ba it, it should be based on the needs of the country uh, and I won't spend too much time except that in order to make sure that it, teachers are sent to the different regions where the needs are, we need a good information system to, to, to inform us about the data, you know, providing us the data that we need to find out what are the needs. Career structure plan and structure path. Um, it relates to the professional development of the teacher, teachers to have a good teaching force. It's very important to provide them a career opportunity, the opportunity to progress in their career in order for the system to have good, train, good teachers so that they can, in return, also train the, newly, uh, the new teachers. The fifth one is the teacher's employment and working condition. So it is important in one way to, if we want to look at the profession, as highly to, to be highly regarded, then we it, it is really important to also provide teachers with very good uh, working conditions. And I've just I've just been told I have five minutes left, so I won't go into the details. But working conditions are mentioned. Um, there has to be elements in the teacher policy about teacher reward and remuneration. Salary is not the only thing. There are also other informal incentives that a country could provide to teachers. Um, there's no direct relation between the salary a teacher can make and the student uh, learning outcome, and the advancement of the students. However, we know that if there's no money for the teachers, then there's no results uh, for the students. Countries need to develop teacher standards. What are the requirements? What should a teacher be able to do in a classroom? And what are the, what, what, what is the knowledge they sh that they should have? Teachers should be accountable to their profession, to their school, but the employer should also be accountable to the students. And school govern governance is also a very important aspect because it defines the climate into which the teachers are working uh, and it's very important that it is being addressed into a teacher policy uh, development. I'll skip this one. Um, so chapter four talks about the different elements that the practical issue that can help when a country is uh, at the stage of developing a teacher policy and I'll go quickly. There are five key phases 
that are provided. The first one is the agenda setting. The second one is the policy formulation per se, based on analysis, um, based on what already exists in the country. We don't want to build from scratch. We want to look at what already exists and build on this. What are the principles that we will be basing the policy on? And what are the choices and the options that we will be making? There's a legal aspect to developing a teacher policy that should not be uh, ignored. They're really important. Uh, and we have to have in place the, the authority that, are, that have the capacity of making, the, um, <clears throat> making it happen. Uh, the implementation phase where we, it, it will be very important to communicate and disseminate information about the teacher's policy, make sure that everyone understands what uh, the policy is about, and of course monitoring and evaluation if we want to know how well it's going, what, are the pro what is the progress that we're making, and um, what should be changed if needed. Skip this one. This is about the key phases of the developing the policy. It will be important to determine whose roles and responsibility, who should be involved in the teacher policy. If there's somebody that shouldn't, or a group of stakeholders that shouldn't be forgotten about when you develop a teacher policy, it certainly is the, the teacher group themselves and unions. Costing will be an important aspect. Um, so as I mentioned, to develop, to be, to have a successful development, you have to look into uh, the existing policy and see how consistent it is with what you're planning to develop. It's important to engage teachers. Um, it also, because it's very country specific, it has to be owned by the country. It should be the country's teacher's policy. And the Education Ministry, which is usually the leading authority to develop and implement the teacher policy, should also have the capacity, meaning the human resources uh, capacity to, to work on developing the, the policy. Of course, you'll need to have a good time frame and roadmap. In terms of implementation, uh, this is what Chapter 5 focuses on. As I mentioned, that the legislative process is an important process. It takes time. It usually takes longer than we think. Um, and it, in many cases, it's a requirement. So it has, it has to go through the process. So it is important to put in place the um, tools that will help executive and administrative decisions to be made. Uh, you, the country will also want to develop tools, mostly a plan of action, a logical framework, uh, you know, costing uh, the different steps, what are the goals, what are the targets, what is the schedule, who's involved at what stage. And monitoring and evaluation, as I mentioned, is also very important. Who's responsible for what part? You're monitoring as well as, 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 as you're implementing the teacher policy, but you also, at different point in time, you also have to make evaluations, sit back and look at what has been done so far, how well it's working. It will not only be about quantitative information, but also qualitative information that will be very important. Of course, there are organizational arrangements that will be required, the costing as well. Whoops, I went back. And the costing of implementation. <laughs> so thank you very much, and I'll look forward to hear your questions. Thank you. Afterward. Our next speaker comes from Finland. Uh, to share the experience of teacher education in that country, which is perceived by many of us as having very high performance, very strongly committed teachers, uh, and families that support education throughout the lifespan of, of their children. Uh, Dr. Jerry Lavonen really has excellent credentials to talk about this. He's uh, a professor of physics and chemistry education at 
in the Department of Teacher Education at the University of Hel Helsinki, Finland. He is both a scholar, uh, producing uh, numerous articles uh, about teacher education uh, and at teacher education policy, but also a practitioner in that he's uh, been active in teaching and teacher education throughout his career. So help me welcome Dr. Jari. Your Excellencies, dear deans, dear professors, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm really honored to participate in this forum for teacher education. I'm happy to share experiences from Finland. Uh, in the previous talk, it was introduced a general idea how to make a plan or strategy for teacher education. And we are just now doing a new strategy for teacher education in Finland. And I hope that this is one exam example how to implement this kind of general guidelines. Teacher education and education are contextual topics. In order to support your understanding about our approach to teacher education, I should say very shortly something about our education context. One of the most underlying ideas in our education is the equity or equality. We look always equal possibilities for all learners, and that's why we have well-developed special education counseling. Also, the physical needs are taken into account. Students get the lunch at school, transport, school books. Everything is offered by free. Uh, this equality is in, in general, if we take a look for OECD reports and we combine the data about the equality in education and the performance in education, we can recognize that countries who, which emphasize the equality, also the performance is very high. So there's a correlation between those things. Another important characteristics of our education is heavy decentralization. We have national guidelines for teacher education, for school education, but the crucial in education in Finland is the local level planning, implementing and assessing. Actually, it's not a question about bottom up or top-down approach, we, we, we think that leadership is in the middle at school site or teach education institute. And, and in, in order to have success in this kind of leadership in the middle approach, we should share a common vision, common understanding where we are going. So I will introduce how we educate just now teachers. And as I mentioned, it is under the reconstruction. We are making a new strategy. And finally, I, I hope that I have time to say something about how Finnish schools are supportive for teachers. But in order to share an, a kind of international literature, through the international literature review, I'm aiming to somehow contextualize our approach to teacher education in this international literature. So and it has been mentioned in this uh, morning, teacher professionalism and effective teachers. So it is clear as His uh, Highness start in the morning that we are looking for good teachers or excellent teachers, or many other terms are used instead of good or excellent, competent teachers, professional teachers, quality, ideal, or respective teachers. So many terms are used. And actually the meaning of those concepts are different. In Finland we are aiming to educate professional teachers. In my understanding, in the United States, they are aiming to educate effective teachers. And actually, the meaning of those 
two concepts is rather different. In the next session, I think we, we, have, a, we have the opportunity to have a look for teacher effecting, effectiveness more deeply. So my approach is more to teacher professionalism. And the understanding of how we understand professional teachers, we understand it so that in teacher education we aim to educate teachers in order to support them to build up a solid knowledge base. Also the collaboration and networking skills are important and competence for lifelong learning. But this teacher professionalism is not only the characteristics of individual teacher. The education policy and school side should be supportive for that. Otherwise we are not having professional teachers. The teacher effectiveness, very simple definition for that. The effectiveness is seen in the learning outcomes measured by standardized tests. And, and sometimes this, our approach is called input approach and many people think that it's very old fashioned way of thinking education. But combining the input and leadership in the middle that might better describe how we understand education. And its effectiveness belongs to the output approach, measuring the outputs and, and looks how, how, how the system is working. I emphasize that teacher professionalism is the characteristics of the whole education context. However, you can find definitions for individual characteristics of professional teacher. And in the research literature, the authors emphasize knowledge base, communication skills and networking skills to do something together. And, and, and third one is this lifelong learning competence. This is our old kind of nutshell in our old teacher education strategy. It's very close to this individual characteristics of professional teacher met in the research literature. So this strategy is from 2001. It's very old. World, world is changing rapidly, but, but still we trust just now, but next year we will have a new one. So we emphasize the subject knowledge, pedagogical content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, social skills, communication skills, ICT skills, moral knowledge, ethical code are important. Second, teachers should develop an understanding that schools are essential part of the society. Networks and partnerships are important in education and lifelong learning. Teachers should have the competence for continuous lifelong learning in the subject matter and in pedagogy. When we study, when we develop our teacher education programs, we take typically into account four point of views. Research is most essential. My university is very research oriented university. It's typically ranked in, in, in any rankings among the best 100 universities in the whole world. So the research is highly appreciated. The content to our teacher education courses comes from our own research and research of the colleagues, nationally and internationally. Research on teaching, learning, engagement, policy, history and philosophy of education. There is a lot of research on teacher education. Researchers are asking what, what is the what are the domains of knowledge teacher need? What are the origins of knowledge? Where is the knowledge coming for a teacher? Teacher identity research, teacher agency research. So we take into account that kind of research while we are planning our programs. Also the research on university pedagogy. And we, we call our, it's a long, long tradition, we have been calling our teacher education research based teacher education. So the research orientation is seen in the planning of the programs. 
Of course, we take into account the strategies, the national guidelines, the European Union guidelines, UNESCO guidelines. But what is the most crucial in our society is feedback. We collect frequently feedback from our students. We also analyze that feedback. We discuss about the feedback. We are looking solutions how to overcome the challenges students have met in their studies. But also the municipality feedback. We are frequently organizing meetings with the municipality people, discussing about teacher education, how happy they are teachers we are educating. Let me introduce shortly our teacher education programs. I take two examples, secondary teacher education and primary teacher education. In Finland, secondary teachers are teaching at grade 7 to 12 and typically two subjects, and primary teachers grade 1 to 6 typically all those subjects we have at primary level. But because we have a heavy decentralization, there are no heavy regulations how schools are allocating resources for group size, lessons, who is teaching what. So that's, that's kind of decisions are made at the local level. So teachers are typically also changing the lessons. Somebody is not so interested about physical education in primary, and some is more interested about religious education. So they change the lessons. I emphasize that our university is a research-oriented university, and six faculties at the university is responsible for teacher education. My faculty, faculty for behavioral sciences, faculty of art, science, bioscience, theology, and social science are active. We have frequently meetings. We are planning together teacher education programs. At my faculty, we have my department of teacher education, but we have also two university schools, which are very, very active in, in guiding student teachers during the student teaching practice. And teachers are highly educated. They are 20 percent of them are having PhD. They are participating in our research. They have taken courses in supervision. They are really committed to the supervision. In our education it's important that students learn from practice. They are not just doing practice, they are learning from practice. And that's why we are having highly educated mentors in our, our programs. And secondary teacher education joint program together with faculties of special subject and, and department of teacher education. And primary teacher education is mainly organized at our faculty. This is the structure of the secondary teacher master level degree. In Finland, all teachers should have a master level degree, five-year university studies. Studies are divided into bachelor, blue color, master level studies, yellow color. Major in this degree would be, for example, physics and minor mathematics, history, social science. The students take the same studies at the department of specific subject as the other students so we highly appreciate the subject knowledge. If teachers have solid knowledge subject, also the epistemological and ontological issues related to the subject, they are able to supervise students' problem-solving activities at school. They have also done themselves research on the subject, so they understand the subject, nature of subject. And pedagogy is organized at my, my department. Our, our staff members all are research oriented. They are making research on the pedagogy, teaching, learning, motivation, history and philosophy of education. Let me emphasize two essential parts. I already emphasized teaching practice. Teaching practice is one third of the pedagogical studies. It is the place where student teachers learn from practice. They combine subject, pedagogy, pedagogical content knowledge, build up their own understanding of teaching and learning. Another characteristic is heavy research orientation. I already mentioned that our programs are based on research. 
research is guiding the planning of the programs. But also the student teachers are making themselves research. They should make bachelor of thesis, master of thesis, and pedagogical thesis. And they all should be like research papers, introduction, questions, methodology, results, discussion. We think that this kind of research orientation gives student teachers the readiness for local level collaboration and they, they, they develop a kind of academic identity. We are academics like medical doctors, we are academics like lawyers. We take responsibility of education. We are owners, as it was emphasized in the UNESCO papers, teachers should feel ownership for education. This uh, teacher education program is very attractive because it's compared to other academic fields. We are able to take only 5% of the applicants to the programs. So the students are high quality students, the best of the all. Last year it was even more difficult to come to primary teacher education than go to medical school at our university. And Primary teacher education, I don't go to the details, but it looks very similar. Major education, first subject, uh, minor is pedagogical content knowledge of school subjects, and the other minor they can choose by free will. We emphasize in the pedagogical studies what is common for secondary and primary teachers, integration of knowledge, different dimensions in teacher profession, collaboration is important, we are not having any inspectors, any testing. Teachers should collaborate and plan together. Reflection, falling and on action, and lifelong learning competencies. We should never be happy with what we have. We should always look some progress, some new ideas. But we have recognized that it is not possible to have every year something brand new. So it's about 10 year period in our, our context we made a big change or big plan. The curriculum change for, for school education, it is made every 10 year a new curriculum. In teacher education it's also, all, also about every 10 year we are making a new strategy, a new, new road map. So the world is changing and, and while we have been thinking how to, what, what topics should we emphasize in our new strategy, we should really carefully think about the changing world around the school. And inside the school, there is more diversity inside the school. Students have difficulties in learning and behavior. There are more immigrants in our schools, more variation, more challenging. But of course the world outside the school is totally changing. So our, our Ministry of Education established a forum for teacher education. Forum as you are having here now. And they nominate me as a chair for this forum. And the ministry told me that there are three topics you have to think carefully. What are the research outcomes related to teacher education? So we have to make a literature review. We should benchmark some other strategies around us the Union also, UNESCO. We should listen. In Finland we are very eager to listen people. So we decided to organize a national brainstorming related to teacher education. We asked opinions of teachers, school teachers, teacher educators, stakeholders. Teacher union is very important to listen. What is the opinion of teacher union and municipality union? And then based on those, we have been planning a national program for teachers pre and in service education. It will be published next month. I'm not going to detail what comes out from the research literature review, but I give one example. TALIS is an OECD driven research on teachers. Finland has participated in it. 
So it's quite interesting to compare how Finnish teachers are thinking and how other teachers are thinking. And then combining this information with the PISA data, you get a nice view how, how teachers are thinking about education. So based on the TALIS and PISA, it's very clear that we should have more support to the engagement of students. We should be more student-centered, guiding the processes, not giving ready knowledge. Needs of individual students are important to recognize and, and, and more uh, assessment more for learning, combining summative and, in, and formative assessment. In classroom level, heterogeneous classes, how to organize them, how to organize team teaching, two teachers at the same time in the classroom, maybe one teacher and one special need teacher, how to emphasize learning of 21st century competencies or generic skills, or there are many names are used instead of 21st century competencies. How to support students to learn collaboration skills, be more creative, learn to make inquiry problem solving. And at school level, Maybe the most crucial topic is that teachers are not enough collaborating in our con context. Even we are aiming to support the learning of collaboration skills in teacher education. The Talis told us that there is not enough networking and collaboration, not enough planning together. So that is challenge for, for our teacher education. The national brainstorming, as I mentioned, leadership in the middle, it means that it's working if we are having common vision, common, common understanding where we should go through education. In addition, we need collaboration, and in addition, we need competent teachers who are able to think themselves, plan themselves, make things better. So we use this kind of uh, internet-based platform for brainstorming. Almost 3,000 people participate in brainstorming. They should first typically generate ideas and give some justification why this idea is important for renewal of teacher education. Then they should evaluate other people's ideas, make rankings. So it was quite easy. They just take an idea, and if it, if it is very close to their own understanding what is a good idea, they take it to the middle. And those who are far from middle, they are not so important ideas. This is simple outcome. There, there are a lot of outcomes from this brainstorming. I, I use only one slide. So what is important in the development of teacher education in our society? based on listening, teachers, teacher educators, stakeholders, teacher union people. Many, many of those ideas are in white, like competence to meet variation, teachers' basic competencies, integration of school subjects. They are actually something that we have quite well now, but people raise those ideas. The blue ones, learning to learn, number one, participation, working life conditions, research-based actions. So, quite of continuous improvement, not only the teacher competence, but the whole school, school environment, school operations. And yellow, generating of ideas, readiness for change, partnerships and networks, something should be done together and generate ideas. They were a little bit more new ideas. And then we come to this kind of conclusion that, so we, we think that teachers should have these three broad competence areas. Broad and solid knowledge base, and this knowledge is used in the classrooms, supporting students' learning, taking into account the variation. Expertise in generating novel ideas and innovation, also in the classroom, together with students, but especially with teachers, how to overcome the local challenges. In Finland, we have a long tradition that teachers are preparing a local curriculum 
which is guiding the school operations, how to have more innovativeness in the planning of local curriculum, how to take the diversity among the school, uh, sorry, how to take the context around the school into account, and then the competence for development of own expertise and school. And there are a lot of actions. We are recommending this kind of actions. We are also allocating several hundred million euros for implementing those ideas. In, in, in education reforms, it's also important that we have enough resources in order to implement the ideas. I'm not introducing all ideas, but just a holistic view is important. Holistic understanding of pre-service and in-service education, how they are linked. And goal orientation and plans. There should be personal plans in teacher education for student teachers. There should be personal development plans for teachers, for schools, for cities. So this, and the plans should be based on the strategy and also based on the analysis of needs. So these are examples of what's coming out from the national work. And, and, and very few, five minutes or, okay? The last, last topic, how our school site support teacher professionalism. Very simple. There are four point of views what are important in our schools. Professional teachers, as I have emphasized many times now, knowledge-based expertise, lifelong learning. Local curriculum assessment and environment, leadership and quality culture, goal orientation and quality culture. In, in Finland, we are not having quality assurance as such. We have quality culture. Principals are responsible for development discussion. They are responsible for collecting feedback from students and families analyzing that feedback, make progress at school. Networks and partnerships. So Finnish teachers analyze the leadership. This is coming from one research project of mine. So we are looking for innovative schools. What are the characteristics of innovative schools? And this is what teachers are telling about the leadership. Goal orientation, interaction, openness, sharing of leadership, common vision, leadership in the middle. Learning environments, we should create new environments, we, we need co-planning, we should have a common goal, networks and partnerships. Actually, it's easy to recognize four or five levels in networks and partnerships. Grade level teams and team teaching, school level teams and networks, student welfare group, leadership team, City level teams, teachers are coming together and develop, for example, the use of technology. Principals are meeting in, in, in meetings. And national networks. We will use, not most, but big amount of this money we, we will use for the development of teacher education for national level networks. Teacher education institutes would learn from each other, solve problems together. And if we have this kind of circumstances, where we have professional teachers, we have leadership, goal orientation and interaction, we have versatile environments, we have good networks, teachers are able to create innovations. The new, new area in our, our teacher education strategy. This teacher is telling us, I have designed with other teachers, pupils, and out-of-school collaborators a new model for school community collaboration that engages primary pupils in this collaboration. So the school community collaboration is a learning environment. A young student is introducing his project work to elderly house person, a win-win situation. An old person gets some new ideas, a student has a real audience. And finally, my last innovation. We have designed in grade level teams the use of smartphones in science learning in order to personalize learning. So the variation in our classroom is coming bigger and bigger. In Finland, we have also students who are not behaving well, who are not focusing to the learning. 
So the smartphones, iPads are wonderful tools, tools for overcoming the challenges in learning. And in this project, it was important that teachers and students together generate ideas how to use smartphones in order to overcome the challenges in collecting data, in analyzing that, sharing the ideas. And now I would like to thank you with my last slide, kind of summarizing, based on the, our experience in Finland, what, what we need in teacher education. We need more professionalism, less bureaucracy. We need more clear shared long-term vision based on research outcomes and brainstorming. We need less ad hoc ideas coming from the politicians. We need more decentralization, decision making, assessment and quality culture at the local level. Maybe we need less standardization, inspection, texting, heavy quality control. We need trust-based responsibility. So the, those things do not happen as such in Finland. We need qualified teachers. And, and the, if we have qualified teachers, then we can trust them. We need less test and inspection. We need more collaboration, networking and partnerships. We need less competition and rankings. Thank you. I want to thank our pre presenters for a very provocative uh, papers, giving us a lot to think about. We do have a few minutes to take either questions for the panelists or uh, comments that you may have. And I don't know if we have a microphone in the audience to, to handle that. Are there any questions or any comments? Good morning, everybody. Uh, the question for Dr. Jerry. I will start from the last uh, words from your speech. Uh, you said you need less tests and less inspection. What's the procedures and methods used in Finland educational system to be ensure uh, the targets of the education system is achieved if, we, if you don't have uh, more tests and more inspections? Thank you. So, so the question was about inspection and control, control outside. So we, we made our big change in education 45 years ago. That time it was decided that teachers should be educated traditional universities in five-year programs. So now all teachers in Finland are having master level degree. And they have been educated to meet decentralization. They have been educated to be responsible for local level curriculum work, local level assessment, also the quality culture.